Hi all, my name is Rishitosh Kumar Chaudhary. I am representing iLearning over here, and in this session, we will talk about custom iterable batch uh, batch classes and uh, how exactly do we man monitor our batch jobs. So we will see these things here. Uh, now let's start. Before uh, we move ahead, I just uh, this is like I'll try to explain what exactly a triple means. So uh, sometimes uh, whenever you are running a loop, okay, so you are iterating on the all the values of the list or a set whatever collection operator you have used for that whatever values are there. for every values in that particular collection operator you iterate and you do perform certain operations okay so in salesforce custom iterable provides developers with power to iterate over records in a highly customized manner okay so they uh, this allows you to define a specific sequence for transversing your records within a salesforce object and give you that freedom to customize how these records are retrieved sorted and filtered okay now whenever i want to implement a custom iterator say in uh, salesforce apex uh, obviously salesforce apex is it is a proprietary programming language right so with apex developer uh with apex developer can create a custom iterable on any object within salesforce platform which means that you have a flexibility to perform complex operation on collection of records such as applying a specific filter criteria or sorting based on particular field or even implementing custom logics to determine the order in which the records will be retrieved and passed on so this this possibilities offered by custom iterables are obviously making the life of a developer very easy which also empowers the developer who work on large data set or uh, need to perform a intricate calculation on a particular collection of records wherever you are engaged in data analysis or a business logic or process automation you can use this custom iterable logics there okay so how exactly do we implement custom iterables inside a uh, salesforce so this involves defining a class that implements two essential interface one is iterable another in other another one is iterator okay so uh, the iterable interface uh, has only single method that is iterator which returns the instance of iterator interface right so the iterator interface on the other hand in it has three vital methods one is has next next and remove has next method lets you check if there are any more el elements available for the collection next retrieves the next element of the collection and remove allows you to remove the last element returned by the next method right so these are these are all about uh, the interfaces for custom iterables which we have in salesforce now when exactly we should implement custom iterables inside our batch class we have certain uh, condition in which we can use that so let's say if we have additional processing and filtering uh, for example if you need to perform any additional processing or apply a custom filter logic to records returned by your query we can use the implementation of batch apex using iterable that provides necessary flexibility with iterables you can have a full control over iteration logic this allows you to easily incorporate custom processing or filtering logic into your batch class as well okay and also enables you to modify records perform complex uh, calculation or apply a specific business rule during this iteration process okay so why the next a uh, reason is whenever you are having uh, whenever you want to reuse your existing list or collection in this scenario what happens when you already have a pre existing list or collection of records and you want to process this particular records in your inside your batch implementing iterables what you can do it can instead of executing a new query using query locator you can have you can you, uh, you can use iterable process for this existing data directly 
right this approach eliminates the need to requery the database and obviously improves the performance a lot if you are not querying it again and again now what else so let's say if uh, so obviously whenever you want to reuse your existing list or collection then again your uh, custom iterables are very helpful now let's say if whatever data i have it is of complex data structure or it is coming from external data source okay so in that case what is going to happen using iterable in your batch class allows you to handle the data in a customized way by impl by implementing your own iterable logic you can transverse the process data in a manner that allow aligns you with a, within a specific requirement or your application for integration this is particularly valuable whenever we are dealing with hierarchical data structure or nested relationship or let's say if you are having external api and you are having the data where uh, another one more condition where you where we use uh, custom iterables are like let's say for example we are using a wrapper class and inside a wrapper class we are having records from multiple objects okay so we cannot query records on multiple objects but what we can do we can create a wrapper class and inside we can populate that wrapper class with the multiple objects from our custom iterable class and then use that particular uh, wrapper class records inside our batch class for doing our operations okay so i'll just show you a small quick demo for the uh, for how exactly we can use this let's say uh, i'll create a new class i'll call it custom variable batch okay this will implement to database over here for me that is and data base dot batchable now let's give it integer now i want to implement to more interface that is iterable integer iterator integer okay so let's see this so in total we are having three interfaces implemented okay we have not added these things iterator sorry not iterator now what we can do is we can uh, have list of integer here okay i created this two global variables now a constructor i'll have so from constructor we are populating the values that's it uh, we created a constructor to populate the values now we will create our start method data base dot batchable context now this will return the data which we have populated that is in my uh, now what we can do is public like void execute so this will define the in the parameters we have to give batchable context and the scope the scope will be your list of integer okay so this is i'm just showing you how exactly it looks like so i'll not do much operations here i'll just define uh, I'll, i'll print the integers whichever we have selected okay and in my finish method public void finish i'll just give uh, yeah and in this finish method i'll just 
give it as it is i don't want to process anything for now so i'll leave it uh, i'll define the other methods here for example has next and next so public integer next this will be uh let's say okay before that i'll have to see and give as next so this will be the return type will be boolean return true only if the index is less than and this will have has next value will be coming from if is not equal to uh if not no let's say if as next is true if as next is true then integer data and so we have given as t here index so what is the index i have used in And I will return the value. Okay. Let's save, see how many arrows I will have. Hmm. Now we have has okay. First look for line by eight. What is this? Okay, I have missed. So we call them there. I'll have to give a table here. Save. Okay. Iterator. I have missing iterator. How can I implement a custom iterator here? Okay, so we have missed a iterator here. Uh, what happened? Now, what we are going to do as next, and I'll add a iterator as well here. Public iterator integer. Let's say what errors we have here. Seven, it will be end twenty five, will be end twenty nine. This is a function, and uh, this is also a function. No, let's see if the size work. Yes. So well, that's it. So this is how basically you create your uh, custom iterable. Now what I'm doing here is I've created a uh, I've created a list of integers here and basically array of integers. And I'm uh, whenever you want to execute on this class, you will have to define this integers while defining uh, while uh, wherever you are. Uh, declaring your batch class for executing you will have to add the arrays of integer arrays over there and then what happens uh, the value whatever you are setting from as parameters there the, the same value will be passed to the start method inside the start method we are printing all the integers and now over here because we have added 
two interface that is iterator and iterable for iterable we have to have a, a method mandatory method called iterator here for uh, it uh, for uh, iterator we have for iterator interface we need to have two methods that is has next and next as next will return as a boolean value if you have another element in your uh, collector uh, collection operator but uh, the next value will be giving as the next value or next element that needs to be processed in uh, that needs to be processed okay so this is how we write we make use of uh, custom iterator in uh, salesforce so let's say whenever we are uh, now exactly i will see uh, whenever we are uh, using this how exactly do we call our uh, how exactly do we i mean to say how exactly do we call our batch class so uh, custom iterable batch class so for that what we are going to do we are going to create a list uh, array of integers first I'll give one comma two comma three comma four. Right now, I will see what is this batch class name because I have created a, a constructor and constructor is having an array of integers, same array of integers I'm passing here. And now I'll execute it database dot execute batch. V comma the size of the batch. But now I'll give two and I'll run this. Okay, so this is how we run our uh, iterable batch. So if I want to see if uh, what is the processing, you will have to go to the jobs, batch jobs, Apex jobs. Okay, so there were three batch, it all of them got processed successfully. So this is how we monitor we monitor our all our, our processing or enqueued jobs from here. So let's say uh, there's also one more place uh, uh, which I wanted to show. but we'll do we'll see it in another now we have uh, uh apex flex queue as well this monitors the status of apex jobs and uh and we can have uh we what we can do we can reorder them as well to control which job is going to process first we can do it using uh apex flex queue okay and uh, for uh, checking the status of the running job we come to apex jobs Right. So this is all about uh, this is all about my uh, bad jobs. In the upcoming class, we'll see exactly how do we schedule a job and uh, what is the concept for uh, what is the concept for queueable apex and future methods. And once we are uh, after the next session, we will be done with the asynchronous apex, and uh, we will be moving towards API. Right. Thank you.